Hello, welcome back to another episode of the self development with Tactics podcast. And um, today we're going to go ahead with probably the last bit of Mindset by Carol Dweck to some sort, actually. Um, it is not necessarily a book summary, but it is somewhat of a summary of the whole topic, I would say. So um, it should be... Meh mindset mind <laughs> growth it should be somewhere there it is um mindset's the new psychology of success by the way it is called if you wonder and there we should actually go there we go um it is smaller, so we're gonna increase the size, and I am there, and it is actually quite sunny, uh, which is, by the way, the beauty of having south-sided windows in your flat, um, at least, I think, in the uh, northern hemisphere, uh, is it hemisphere? I don't actually know, but in the northern part of the world, uh, in, in, in wintertime, or at least in my region, having south-sided windows is pretty amazing because you are not getting that much solar energy in the summer because this is just you know how things are and um in the winter you're getting some quite actually a lot compared to any other uh way of placing your windows which is amazing um i think yesterday we have stopped with from setback to success i think this might have been uh, the last one we went through and uh yeah i mean <laughs> i could have gone through the last part as well but but yeah the power of yet in this ted talk Dweck describes two ways to think about a problem that is slightly too hard for you to solve operating in the space just outside of your comfort zone is the key to improving your performance it is also the critical element to deliberate practice people approach these problems with the two mindsets are you not smart enough to solve it or have you just not solved it yet? Speaking to the cultural pressure to raise your kids for now instead of not yet, in the TED talk, Dweck says, let me actually check whether the audio is fine. Because I th should theoretically hear myself, but I, I don't know if I do, but yeah, I do. I do. Sorry if that was really loud. I heard about a high school in Chicago where students had to pass a certain number of courses to graduate, and if they didn't pass a course, they got the grade not yet. And I thought that was fantastic, because if you get a failing grade, you think, I am nothing, I am nowhere. But if you get the grade not yet, you understand that, you're not, that you are on a learning curve. It gives you a path into the future. Not yet also gives me insight into a critical event early in my career, a real turning point. I wanted to see how children cope with challenge and difficulty, so I gave 10-year-olds problems that were slightly too hard for them. Some of them reacted in a shocking and positive way. They said things like, I love a challenge, or, you know, I was hoping this would be informative. They understood that their abilities could be developed. They had what I call a growth mindset, but other students felt it was tragic, catastrophic. From their more fixed mindset perspective, the intelligence had been up for a judgment, and they failed. Instead of luxuriating in the power of yet, they were gripped in the tyranny of now. So what do they do next? I'll tell you what they do next. In one study, they told us they would probably cheat the next time instead of studying more if they failed a test. In another study, after failure, they looked for someone who did worse than they did so they could feel really good about themselves. And in study after study, they have run from difficulty. Scientists measured the electrical I'm sorry, electrical activity from the brain as students confronted an arrow on the left. You see the fixed minds of students, there's hardly any activity. They run from the arrow. They don't engage with it. But on the right, you have the students with the growth mindset, the idea that abilities can be developed. They engage deeply. Their brain is on fire with it. With yet, I'm sorry. They engage deeply. They process the arrow. They learn from it and they correct it. It is easy to fall into the trap of now. Our kids become obsessed with getting A's. They dream of the next test to prove themselves instead of dreaming big like 
Elon Musk. A byproduct of this is that we're making them depend on the validation that we're giving them. The gamification, I'm sorry, gamification of children. What can we do about this? Don't praise intelligence or talent, praise the work ethic. We can praise wisely, not praising intelligence or talent that has failed. Don't do that anymore, but praising the process the kids engage in, their effort, I'm sorry, their strategies, their focus, their perseverance, their improvement, this process praise creates. This process praise creates kids who are hard, hardy and resilient. How we word things affects confidence. The words yet or not yet give kids greater confidence, give them a path into the future that creates greater persistence. We can change mindsets. And yes, um, I would certainly also say that uh, saying you have failed, you did bad, you have not passed it, uh, you weren't good enough. Um, these are words, these are phrases that nobody wants to hear. Of course, I think that honey coating everything and, you know, just, uh, you know, it might actually not be about honey coating. You know, this, this might be the reason why people are doing that and why things are being done this way. Uh, but, 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 but realizing that you have the capabilities, but you haven't made it yet, creates this, creates this feeling inside of, we can do it, I can do it, but I haven't put in enough effort yet. I haven't put enough time in it yet, but I can do it. If I really want to do so, I can no matter what, of course, you know, for me, it, it, it might take a bit more time, but I can do it. I mean, in the end, uh, we are, and I do not necessarily think that this is a bad thing. And I made an entirely episode about um, comparing yourself to somebody else and, and why sometimes it is actually not that bad. I mean, by comparing, I do notice where I stand, what I maybe should be or, or want to improve at, and so on and so forth. So it's actually, you know, not, not really that bad. Um, in one study, we taught them that every time they push out of their comfort zone to learn something new and difficult, the neurons in the brain can form new strong connections and over time, they can get smarter. Students who were not taught this growth mindset continued to show declining grades over this difficult school transition, but those who were taught this lesson showed a sharp rebound in their grades. We have shown this now, this kind of improvement with thousands and thousands of kids, especially struggling students because maybe those struggling students they are used to maybe being called dumb being called not good enough you'll never get there but you haven't made it yet it really does create this 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 new thought this new this new perspective into life this new perspective into um i can do it i can do it it just takes a bit of time and it is fine for me to just take a bit of time. It is not that bad. And um, I mean, it, it also just takes the pressure off of one. And as, as Andrew Huberman has been talking about this growth mindset and this ability for us to basically create dopamine and, uh, well, synthesizing it and, then and, and, you know, keeping it, keeping it on track, keeping it, uh, you know on, on normal levels and you know l letting it you know spike not too much so that it doesn't fall too much and whatever um that we are also more motivated to do so and we are also better doing um whatever we're about to do or whatever we are willing to do so this whole growth mindset is and um really recently i've been trying to also include that more into my life i have seen really a decline in but I don't want to say happiness. Uh, I think a decline in well-being the past few weeks, months, due to, you know, having a lot of stress and due to other things that I really wanted to change and I am about to change now, finally. Um, and one of them definitely, as I have found out, is this growth mindset, is this mindset of, okay, um, I can do it. Just, you know, maybe takes a bit of time. It, it, it really, for whatever reason, reminds me of Seth Gollin. Uh, Seth Godin being 
uh, very precise indeed with his communication, but you know, I I believe never being too well, maybe too harsh, you know, unnecessarily harsh, you know, harsh in a way that is not producing any any benefit and uh well uh not yet you know i i haven't done it yet i have not been able to do this and learn this and then whatever yet um i'm having uh an exam today indeed and uh throughout the the process um the letter process you know because i started i think learning a bit early before this 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 little journey before i started this little journey i I am I'm really trying to to also focus on this this learning. Um, um, it is interesting. It is good to struggle, and when I make myself believe that it is good to struggle, it is good to to put in the effort, it is good to to have difficulties, to push through the difficulties. Um, I can create those happy moments. I think, um, but I think also important is to note that um, one should not. Not always, as Andrew also pointed out, should not always celebrate every single win that much, you know, so that your dopamine doesn't drop and so you can continue doing whatever you're doing. Of course, you know, being happy about things is, is totally fine and should also be done. But, uh, you know, I don't always have to throw a party just because I'm passing an exam. Um, you know, maybe when I you know pass it really well. But, uh, you know, is it really important to pass it that well? Um, Shouldn't we check? Uh, shouldn't we just take those, those, those bits of information that are really interesting to us and and work with them, and leave everything else out that uh, we do not really believe is interesting to us or is just not interesting to us? Um, I think so, especially when you're studying at university. I, and I mean, of course, uh, we are having standardized things. We're having standardized. Uh, textbooks and um, things that we have to learn and, and whatever but um, you know at some point you can specialize yourself and at some point you probably and hopefully are um, you know working on something that you're really passionate about and um, of course you know some people have a lot of passions but I would argue that there are just you know some for for all of us um, not that many and uh, I don't know you know don't have to be great at everything of course, uh, you know, this, this This might be even more interesting than, you know, when it is something that I do not really necessarily like and, you know, trying to become better at it, trying to, you know, push through that, push through the process, push through that difficulty that I'm having with this certain subject. I, for example, I, um, you know, I'm studying architecture and I am not really into building things, building models. I'm just more like, uh, you know, I like to be in a digital space gives me it's, it's just you know more interesting to me but maybe but i don't know you know maybe i can uh i can think about the process i can think about like uh i don't know the things that i'm doing you know the the model building and maybe i can just you know get something out of it i don't know i think it is also about uh, strategic um st strategies i mean of course i can build something pretty uh, pretty uninteresting to me, but um, I mean, throughout this this process of building something, I can also learn, you know, maybe about shapes, maybe about you know how how certain materials are working. Um, I have used concrete in in recent times, and it is actually quite a lot of fun, um, a bit dangerous, and uh, you know, it's it's a bit awful, but uh, it, it is really interesting, and also the results they they get quite interesting and you know really stable and whatever. Um, it is a cool thing, but uh, um, in the end. I think grades are just grades and um you know one professor um is there actually a female version of professor I don't know um told me uh, or t well teacher it's, she was the professor I think teacher uh, told us nobody gives a shit about the things that you're doing in university uh, in the end in, you know in the real world but you know people care more about those things that you have built the things that you have done, those companies that you have worked at, those experiences that you're already having, those, um, you know, probably also the software that you're able to use because, you know, they all are using different things. And so, um, you know, the, what, what is really important in the end? It's definitely something to, to, to keep in mind. But yeah, with that being said, I'm willing to end the episode there. I wish the best and hopefully see you soon. So.